Have you ever watched a sport that you've never played before and watched it and thought, hey, you know what? That actually looks pretty easy. Maybe I should try that. And so you go out and you try the sport and you get out there and you're like, oh no, this is actually significantly harder, way more complicated than I thought it would be. And the people that you watched originally, the professionals, they just, they made it look easy easy. They made it look almost effortless. This is like golf for me. I got, you know, I watch people play golf. They hit the ball. It goes exactly where they want it to go. When I go out to play golf and the ball doesn't go anywhere near where I want it to go. In fact, half the time it's exactly where I left it before I swung the club. The pros have done the difficult work of keeping it simple, of making it look simple, making it look easy, but they've invested time and energy and persistence. Now this idea and concept doesn't just apply to sports, it applies to communication as well. Think about when you've learned about something new, a new leadership concept or idea, you're learning about a new technology or something, and you wanna be able to communicate that to other people. I've had this happen recently to me, I've been exploring chat GPT and I was learning about it, I've been testing it out and I wanted to share it with a good friend of mine who's a professional. I'm like, hey, you know what, I think this could benefit your business. And he starts to ask me a little bit more about it and I just kind of fumbled over my words. I'm like, well, it helps you, you know, you can ask it questions and it writes back and it's artificial intelligence and all these things. I was excited about it, but I didn't have a good understanding. I hadn't done the difficult work of being able to understand it to the point that I could simplify it and explain it. And so we're in John Maxwell's book, Everyone Communicates, Few Connect. And we come to this chapter where it says, connectors do the difficult work of keeping it simple. And just like the sports example and the example I used trying to explain chat GPT, it's a difficult work because you've got to be able to dive in. You've got to be willing to go that extra mile of not just being aware of an idea or a concept, but actually understanding how that relates to the audience, understanding it in such a way that it's going to be able to benefit when you communicate to the person you're trying to connect with. How can that actually benefit their life? How can they understand something and be able to take that and take it and move in action? And that takes an extra level. It's not just being aware of something, but understanding it and understanding it such that it can relate to your audience. It is a difficult work of keeping it simple. And John says in this chapter, you know, the measure of a great teacher isn't what he or she knows, it's what the student comes away knowing. And I thought, isn't that great? Because I've been in those situations, you probably have too, whether you're in a lecture or a seminar or a sermon or whatnot, and it's clear that the person sharing has a great understanding of their topic, but you actually come away maybe more confused than when you went into the room. And this happens all the time, the communicators all the time. They haven't done the extra difficult work of simplifying, clarifying the message so that it can actually have the impact, the desired impact that I believe that we're looking to have as we we communicate as we connect with other people. And this brings me to the three points that I wanted to pull out of this chapter that I believe will assist you and I as we sort of walk down this journey of learning to connect with people better. Three points to kind of keep us on track and how do we clarify and simplify our message in such a way that it actually can connect with people, actually can uplift and impact other people's lives. So the first step that you and I can keep in mind and take in as we walk forward in connecting with people is to talk to people and not above them. And when you say that, that you want to talk to people, not above them, I want to say that and just remind you, you know, this happens sort of really naturally. As you learn about a topic, not just because maybe we're thinking about things from a selfish perspective, but as you learn about a topic, you become more versed in that topic. You learn more about it. Your vocabulary around that topic or what it is you're trying to share changes and grows and develops. And so naturally, as you start to share about that topic or whatever it is that you're trying to impart or help other people with, you know more than they do potentially in that space. And you need to be able to understand understand and be able to break that down and put it into the right terms to be able to connect with the audience. John talks about, you know, you've got to know who it is that you're talking to and know how to speak to them where they're at so that it can connect and impact in their life. So as you grow in knowledge, make sure that you understand that your audience maybe isn't at the same point as you are in what it is that you're trying to communicate. There was a pastor at a church I was a part of as I was growing up and he was highly intellectual. He was, you know, a very great teacher, but he would preach these sermons and he would use these words and you'd come away and you know, he was brilliant and you go, wow, I know there was something really powerful in there, but I have to look up all these words to be able to properly understand what it is that he was preaching about this Sunday. Brilliant, passionate, wanting to connect with people, but he didn't take that extra step of understanding his audience. I mean, his audience was a congregation of people. He wasn't preaching at a university. It was a congregation of people that wanted to be uplifted and encouraged. And that message often would just sort of fly over the heads of his listeners because he hadn't done the work of taking it to a point of simplification to be able to impact the lives of the people that were listening to him. We need to keep our audience first, keep our audience in mind first. Where are they? Where are they at? And how is what it is that we're communicating going to impact them so that we speak to them, not above them? And the second point that I'm pulling out of John's book in this chapter is just that, 
get to the point. How often have you been in a seminar or a sermon or somewhere someone speaking and you're going, you know what, they've got a great point, but they probably could have said it at about half the time. I think this happens to all of us <laughs> probably very often where it's like, you got a great idea, a great concept, but as speakers, as you learn to communicate, we have this danger of falling in love with the sound of our own voice. And so we'll speak because we can, because we have that opportunity. John says that he asks himself two questions when he's preparing to connect with people. What do I want them to know? And what do I want them to do? Time is our greatest resources. And I think that as communicators and people that are trying to connect speakers, we need to be respectful of the time of our listener. Let's make sure that we're tailoring our message and dive into the point as soon as we can. Give them the meat, give them what they're looking for and then actionable steps. How can you take this and apply this in their lives? And the third point that I pulled out of this chapter about doing the difficult work of keeping it simple is to say less. I heard this story recently of a journalist. He wrote a great article. It was a fairly long article and it was a number of years ago. It was on the web and it ended up getting over a million views. And he said he was super excited when he got that information. But then as the analytics came in on the data, it was a web published article and the analytics showed that less than 1% of people actually read past the first page. So he had sort of had this engaging title and maybe an engaging heading, but very few people had actually read the entire article. It actually gone all the way down. It was a long article and actually read it. And it was really interesting. At first he was discouraged, but he actually took that information and was able to say, you know what? People have so much coming at them. There's so much information to them, but how can he take the messages that he wants to convey? Cause he clearly was very good at doing that and condense it down in such a way that it could impact people. So he didn't need to write articles that were pages and pages and pages. It was clear that he was able to recognize and communicate ideas. He needed to be able to do that with brevity and actually bring that to a point. And we see this not just with written word, but of course we see it when people are speaking and you can be in the audience or watch an audience and watch them get to the point where they just start to glaze over. They think they've heard the point, but they're no longer listening. And then of course there's the written form. I see this all the time with email. You receive an email and it's got like paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs and you're like, oh no, I don't, I don't have time to read this. I'm sad I actually opened it. So you hit unread or, or you snooze it or whatever it is you do, you push it off to the side. When you're communicating by email, could you say it less, you know, with less words? Could you condense that down and communicate your points, get the points clear and actually take less of the recipient's time when you're communicating with people? There's always opportunities, I think, to clarify, spend the time to say less so it actually can have more impact. At the end of the chapter, John encourages us to communicate with clarity and simplicity. And I want you to remind you that, you know, everyone has life going on. Life happens to each and every single one of us. And that includes the people that you're trying to connect with. So we want to be respectful of where they're at, respectful of their time. We get to do the difficult work of keeping things simple so that it can connect with people. We don't need people to have to read further or listen through more because we haven't taken the time to clarify our ideas. And so as you and I go forward, learning to communicate and connect with people better, let's remember that people are not impressed by our intellect or what it is that we know, but people are moved and persuaded by what it is that they understand and what it is that they're able to take and implement in their life.